What's going on guys, welcome back to another Cyberpunk video. Today we're going to take a look at the recent skill tree revamp in update 2.0. This, in my opinion, is one of the best changes coming up with a new update. And not just that, it makes some of the existing builds a lot stronger, but even adds complete new synergies. That's in part due to the revamp to many perks and skills, but also complete new mechanics we never had before. So today I'm going to go over a full breakdown of the skill tree, how you should approach investing into it and creating new builds, but also how to make literally any build overpowered. And if not overpowered, much, much stronger than you would by default. Now, one of the first things you're going to notice in the new skill tree is that the max attribute points are going to be 66 and the max perk points are 80. However, this is with the Phantom Liberty expansion installed and with a new max level in it of 60. If you're playing at level 50 and or without Phantom Liberty, just extract 10 points from these. So that would be 56 into attributes and about 70 into perk points. However, not all perk points come from leveling. You will get about 56, give or take, at level 50. For the remaining until 70 or 80 with Phantom Liberty, you will need to do something else. And I already gave you the hint with the skill progression, it kind of works just like how it is right now, though that has also been revamped. In terms of all of these other attributes, there are some other major changes in terms of how you will invest your points. So no longer will you have odd numbers like 12 or 18 into specific skill trees. That is completely gone and instead you will either have 4, 9, 15 or 20. Not that you can't, you can still do it and get the extra bonuses from the attributes, like for example having extra health from the body. But uh, generally at these levels at 4, 9, 15 and 20 is when you unlock new thresholds or new rows of abilities and passives to unlock, which are increasingly better all the way to providing much better benefits and even new ultimates and cool things along the way. So this is how we're going to proceed. However, from this point on, I'm going to focus on some of my favorite mechanics from each skill tree that you can use in conjunction with your own build to fully enable its max potential, to increase your max damage, defenses, maneuverability, and even get complete new synergies between different types of weapons. So in no particular order, starting things off with the reflex, many, many builds, both melee as well as gunplay ones, will want to use 15 points into reflexes and that's because this fully unlocks the dash including the air dash at level 15 and this is going to completely enable you to do a lot of cool things will give you a ton of maneuverability it replaces your dodge mechanic by default bound to left control on the keyboard not sure what it is on the controller but this is going to replace it with a much better dash that covers a lot more distance it's a much better gap closer and escape ability kind of like the maneuver system but even better than that fully enable you to spam dash against enemies and even make use of stuff like Karanzikov. You can also use Karanzikov with the regular dodge, but it's just much better when you dash. So if you purely want just the dash mechanic, there are some adjacent passives you can go alongside with. So in the case of gunplay builds, multitasker, muscle memory and steady grip are going to help you to shoot, reload, um, even like aim and all of that when sprinting, sliding, vaulting, dashing. It's pretty much the same as it is right now. There are some passives in the reflex in 163 that already behave the same otherwise if you're not using this you will scrap them and instead just focus on mad dash which doubles the dash range towards enemies this is literally going to let you go to them from like the other side of the map it's just insane how good it is but also aerial acrobat can help a ton to improve mid-air maneuverability if you want to like fare a little bit better. Now we're gonna talk about reflexes more in just a little bit. In the meantime, in terms of health regen, there's one thing you can easily do for almost any build, and that is to just add one point into the body, even if you don't want anything else from this like skill tree, you can just invest one point and unlock the painkiller, speed junkie, army of one, and also the combat kid. So this is going to enable health regen in combat for you. Then the speed junkie will increase your health regen rate even more if you sprint. And that's going to be actually quite good. You regen quite a lot of HP when sprinting with just these two. And you can also get the army of one, which is going to give you a health regen rate even higher for each nearby enemy. So the more enemies you fight, the better your regen is going to be. And finally, the comeback kid just increases your health regen rate for each percentage missing health that you have 
So these three can help quite a ton with your health regen problems. Now one skill line that was a total surprise to me in 2.0 was technical ability which becomes even more important and better than before and no not because of crafting. Crafting has been redesigned and now any build and any character can build and craft even legendary gear no matter if they have technical ability or not. There are a couple of things in there that help with reducing the component cost but otherwise everybody can use it now. The reason why technical ability is so important and why many builds will want to maybe push to 20 in it is because of two very important passives right here. Well, one of them can already be accessible by just investing 10 points into tech ability and that is the recharge of health items. So this includes stuff like the health boosters and the health consumables and the blood pump. These have been completely redesigned and are much more useful than ever before. In fact, you will want to use them almost constantly, which means you will want to have for example a chance to instantly reset your health items when you neutralize enemies which is what gluten for work gives you or have a better recharge speed from the health freak but there's also these other passives in here that are very good like the first aid which also gives you additional recharge speed for the health items when you only use one charge of your health item transfusion which gives you more health from it Field Medic, which makes you use it faster in combat and even like the Borrowed Time, which instantly recharges it if you're at low HP. So these help already a ton with survivability when you use these items. But the even bigger mechanic over here is going to be the improved cyberware capacity. By default, you don't have much of it. It also levels up with you as you gain levels and there are other ways to further extend it in the end game. But if you push all the way to 20 and eventually jump into license to Chrome and even Edge Runner, you will increase that capacity to insane new levels, like getting at least like double of what you have right now, plus some extra 50 in there too. Edge Runner, however, is the highlight here because it lets you exceed your max cyberware capacity by 50 points, but also reduces your max health by 25% if you fully occupy all of them. However, it gives you some other benefits including up to 5% chance to trigger almost like a cyber psycho mode and the game calls it the fury mode. This gives you 10% extra damage, 30% critical chance and a massive 50% critical damage for 12 seconds. It triggers actually fairly often and it does remind me a bit of a certain character from Edge Runners. you will see and it will make sense once the, yeah, the update drops but it's an amazing ability and many builds will want to push for full on chrome out kind of builds that occupy every single cyberware slot or implant. Cyber implants have also gone through a massive redesign and many of the existing ones are actually not going to be as strong in the new update while other much better variants have taken their place so there has been a shift in the top tier list that we have in 2.0 compared to 1.6.3. And besides that, Cyborg as well as Extended Warranty helps a ton to further reduce the cooldown for all your cyber implants and also to extend the duration of them. So if you go with something like some Devastan, this is what you're going to want to push for. Also, there's Renaissance Punk. This gives you plus four points to cyber capacity for each attribute at nine or higher. So at level 60, you can potentially push at least four out of the five attributes to nine or higher. And depending on the build, Build even all 5 out of 5 so you will get at least 12 16 even 20 extra cyber capacity just from this depending how you redistribute your attribute points and there's also stuff like the driver update which adds additional stat modifiers to your cyber implants um, this is again part of that redesign i was talking about as well as the chipware connoisseur which lets you re-roll them and pick between different options maybe you want an option that has more damage or one that is more aimed towards defenses or maybe more towards stealth you're going to be able to pick between them when you're doing upgrades. Now, the cool skill line I found to be one of the most skippable, especially if you're not planning to add any stealth to your gameplay, or even more so if you're not planning to play with any precision rifles, snipers, pistols, revolvers, or with throwable daggers. However, if you do plan to implement any of these, it can work really well. I'm just going to focus for now on the stealth and the changes made to it. There's one very interesting change, in my opinion, to the stealth, which is from the blind spot. So blind spot, as you can see, it's going to make it harder for enemies to detect you when you're crouched, the higher the mitigation chance you have. So this is something that you're going to be given from pretty much almost all the passive perks here, like small target, feline footwork, 
unexposed and even the ninjutsu so it's actually a very interesting mechanic essentially you don't just get like a ton of damage mitigation from all of these but it's also going to make enemies much more difficult to detect you in the first place which when you combine it with the ninjutsu which is going to let you sprint while you're crouched you can essentially just make a build that constantly stays crouched and you get all of these damage reductions plus it's going to be easier for you to eventually escape from enemies because it's going to be harder for them to detect you so a very very interesting new mechanic that makes or adds a new layer to stealth that we never had before now there are also possibilities to implement some of the new melee finishers that we get for example for the mono wire i've seen one you can use that as kind of like a stealth takedown against targets but it only works under certain circumstances and it first requires you to be in combat for that to happen or at least to maybe attack certain enemies in certain ways for that to trigger i'm going to show that to you in just a little bit so let me show you a possible interaction that i actually played with which is the finisher live wire now normally you can trigger this when enemy is at low health and you can both do it from the front and from the back this i believe works for all other finishers too but in this case in particular it can also trigger when you line up multiple quick hacks against the same target so it increases the chances and it will let you do it outside of low health um, however if you can use quick hacks that remove that enemy or isolate it both visually as well as audibly from his teammates like for example using sonic shock i believe that's what it's called like you can just isolate that target line up those quick hacks and then use the finisher from behind and use it as a stealth takedown it worked for me um, it just requires a bit more work compared to going in and just strangling them or breaking their necks now for the intelligence skill tree usually this is mostly aimed for net running however there's one build that can still make use of it and that's going to be the smart guns i do want to focus first on the overclock mechanic a new one added in 2.0 and that's because this gives you a very interesting new effect well besides unlocking the ability to just use quick hacks even if you don't have enough ram but instead consuming your own hp plus it kind of reduces a bit the cost of using quick hacks and increases on the damage but uh, this has the potential to be possibly the best healing mechanic in the entire game it only works with cyber decks however but if you um, combine this with sublimination and with like power surge and race against mind you will get an insane health regen basically get like a full health in an instant because sublimination when you activate overclock all the ram recovery also now regenerates your health and it affects your health regeneration then with the power surge when you activate overclock it instantly restores health equal to five times of your maximum ram so like if you have 14 that's 14 by 5 so that's a very very easy 70 health just from this alone but you can maybe get a bit more like towards 20 which gives you like 100 health right away so i found this to be an excellent option even if you're not playing full on the net runner though obviously it's going to be very good for that one but um, even more so if you're going with like a net runner melee hybrid or net runner gunplay hybrid uh, speaking of hybrids there is one insane synergy i discovered and that's from the smart guns with um, something in the reflex skill line so this skill line right here also gives you a ton of buffs to how fast you acquire targets with smart guns how fast you can lock on them and even the point of locking on multiple targets at the same time especially with a target prism but also with a no escape and eventually you can also combine this with the overclock to also gain additional 25 percent damage and even extra target lock with smart weapons when they are affected by a quick hack but that's a different story so this can help quite a bit with that and we can further synergize this extremely extremely well with the submachine fun with the salt and wound and with the sharpshooter right here in the reflex especially submachine gun this makes it possible for you to swap smgs and automatically reload them plus increase your fire rate and like just do everything in one single go so you can potentially run with two smgs constantly switch between them and absolutely never having to reload at all you just swap between smgs even if they are the same but just swap between them and you don't have to reload ever ever again with smart weapons this just creates an absolutely devastating build plus sharpshooter that increases your damage and also improves your aim with every single stack that you do plus stacking damage with assault in the wound it just makes 
an absolutely ridiculous build that I cannot wait to show you guys once it all happens. Now also specific to Phantom Liberty is going to be the new Relic skill line. I only want to talk about one ability here in particular which is the Jailbreak. So this is going to kind of let you charge up your Mantis Blades, Gorilla Arms, Projectile Launch System and the Mono Wire to gain new powerful effects. For example, in the case of the Mantis Blade, you have a very long away, far reaching leap that also like lets you perform these new finishers. Also, if you charge up your Gorilla Arms, it kind of does this very cool slow motion animation that sends enemies flying very far away. And Projectile Launch System, I think, gets override and so you can just shoot a ton of rockets. But Mono Wire is by far the most interesting because now Mono Wire in, uh, well, Phantom Liberty, not in 2.0, but in Phantom Liberty, you can dedicate a slot of one of your control cyber hacks or quick hacks and instead of putting it on the cyber deck you put it on the mono wire slot so what this does is that when you charge up a heavy attack with the mono wire it's going to apply that cyber control hack on the enemy or the targets affected so let's say for example you get cripple movement or weapon glitch you charge up your mono wire hit the target and it immediately applies that quick hack to the target without having you to waste your cyber deck or use quick hacking to do that. You just do it with the melee attack from the mono wire. It's extremely, extremely powerful because it also adds some extra damage on top of what you already have. And by the way, this is going to work extremely well with the mono wire that scales off intelligence. We're going to cover a lot more of that once it all comes out, but trust me, you can achieve some insane, insane builds way better than ever before, way deeper in terms of the things they can do, the mechanics that get involved in each build, and I already have like five builds lined up that all do different things. So yeah, many, many new mechanics. Sorry it took 16 minutes to explain just the gist of it, but yeah, there are a lot more that I did not get a chance to explain. I will cover them a lot more when new videos will drop starting tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna have the review on the channel. So if you wanna stay up to date with everything Cyberpunk related, make sure to subscribe, leave a like on the video, and I'll see you in the next one.